Hey everybody, it's Dr. Taylor and welcome to today's video where we're going to continue our talk about the types of measurement scales. This is the fourth video in a four part series and today we're going to be talking all about ratio scales. All right, so ratio scales, what are they and how do you analyze them? Well, ratio scales are the highest level of measurement scales. So they're similar to interval scales, if you remember from the last video, in that the numbers, the actual measures that are used to identify the attribute, they actually have meaning. So the order of the numbers matters. There's also a hierarchy that exists between the categories where, where one category is better or more than the other category. With ratio scales, they're similar to interval scales in that the categories have equal groupings. And so each category has an equivalent interval. The difference between one and two is the same as the difference between two and three and the difference between three and four. Now, ratio scales are different from interval scales in that they have a zero point. So you can have an absence of the attribute. So there's a natural zero on the scale where the respondent can choose an absence of the attribute being measured. Now, it's important to note that just because you include zero in on your scale, it does not necessarily make it a ratio scale. You must have the measures, the hierarchy, and equal groupings in order to make it a ratio scale along with the zero. So if you have a zero, but then for example, if you did numbers of visits per week to my store, how many times a week do you visit my store? And you did zero, one to two, uh, three to five, five to 10 and, and 11 and over, that would still be an ordinal scale rather than an interval scale or a ratio scale. Even though it had a zero point, the intervals were not equal, so it doesn't make it a ratio scale. So if it has equal groupings, the hierarchy, and the measures have meanings, and it has that zero point, then it's a ratio scale. So for example, age can be considered a ratio variable because you could always be zero years old. It's very unlikely, but you could. So let's go through a couple of examples. You have a product usage example here. So a survey question that's on average, how many bottles of water do you purchase each week? Um, you could say zero. So zero is an option here. So it makes it a ratio scale. Uh, what year were you born? So, Born in 1999, if you were born in 1989, 1979, that's the year you were born. Now, what makes this a ratio variable, because technically you can't say I was born in year zero, is that this variable is transformed. You, in order to get age, you have to take the current year and subtract it from the year of birth. And that gives you the age. And technically age could be zero because if it's right now it's 2020, if I was put that I was born in 2020, 2020 minus 2020 is zero. So there is a zero point. Now, is it likelihood that someone who is zero years old would be answering this survey? No, it's, it's not. Um, but there still is a zero point in the scale, which makes it a ratio plus the equal interview intervals where one year, there's a one year interval between each of the answers that someone could give. So when it comes to analyzing ratio scales, what do you report? Well, you can report frequencies in terms of counts and percentages, but it's important to note that they, this gets really messy because if you have what's called a continuous variable, like an age where you have um, a significant amount of answer choices that people could make, so, in age, they could be anywhere from 20 to 80. That's 60 different scale points. If you did a frequency count on each and every age, it would be really large and really messy. So while you can do frequencies and 
I mean, sometimes I'll do frequency counts on ages and ratio variables just to kind of eyeball where things are at and to see if I have um, any particular age groups or, or ages that um, are more highly represented than others. But for the most part, frequencies can be kind of messy when it comes to ratio scales, but we can report them. We also can report mode, which is the most frequently occurring category that was selected. And we may have multiple modes and the more, the higher the number of options that you have, so the different age ages that they could be, the more likely you are to have multiple modes. Um, you can also report median, just like um, when it comes to ordinal and interval scales. So again, you just place the numbers in value order and you select the number that's exactly in the middle. Just like interval, you can report the arithmetic mean. So this is just sum up all the answers and divide it by the number of respondents and you get the average. So relatively simple. But with ratio scales, you can do two other things. You can do the geometric and harmonic means, which you cannot do with uh, interval or ordinal or nominal variables. So this is unique. So what are geometric and harmonic means? Well, there's three main different types of means. The first is the arithmetic mean that most of us are very familiar with. And this is just adding all the items and dividing by the number of items that exist. So that's the most common mean we use. And it's the most common mean that I've used in statistical analysis. However, you can do some really cool things with ratio variables where you can start calculating these geometric means. And these are usually used for growth rates. So growth in population, growth in interest rates. Um, and this multiplies the item, items and then takes the nth root. So a little bit different calculation and you can only use positive numbers, but it's considered the geometric mean. You can also take the harmonic mean, which this is when the data are uh, ratios of two different variables that have different measures. And so you can um, get the mean doing that as well. So we can use means and it's a little more advanced and you can do more things with ratio data than you can with interval. And you can do more with interval than you can with ordinal. And you can do more with ordinal than you can with nominal. So what, do ratio, what does a ratio analysis look like? Well, if we took the survey question, on average, how many bottles of water do you purchase each week? And we had all these 11 cases and their answers. And we put them in order. And we found the mode, which is 10. We found the median, which is right in the middle, which is 10 and we find the mean is 12.2. So all three of these kind of tell us where the central point is. It gives us details about the central points. And mode and median are similar, and the mean is kind of close. So the mean tells us on average that people purchased well, about 12 bottles of water each week. Now, when we do this analysis, like I said, the frequencies aren't too useful. In, in this particular case, we could, you know, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 different uh, frequency counts, 10 different answers, given their frequencies, and their percentages would look pretty much all the same, which I think it's around 9.1% uh, because it's one divided by 11. Um, this would be the only one that's different. So it, it wouldn't give us that much useful information. So you don't always have to do frequencies. Like I said, sometimes they're good to eyeball, but not to report, especially when you're dealing with clients. Don't use frequencies. Now, some of the cool things that you can do is that you can take a ratio variable, you can turn it into an interval or ordinal variable or even a nominal variable, and then you can report those frequencies to your client. So it's very common if I had an age 
I've had an age variable where I would take it, put it into categories. Maybe I'm looking at, you know, 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, put it into those different categories and then report the frequencies on those categories. While I also reported the mode, the median and the mean on this ratio data. So it becomes a recoding issue at that point. I would take the ratio variable, recode it into new categories and then turn it into an interval scale and then report the frequencies of the interval format. So you can do some fun things with it and be able to manipulate the data that way so that it tells a more interesting story. But that is it for our video today on ratio scales, which is the fourth video on the types of scales, uh, the types of measurement scales workshops. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you later. Bye.